I am in the middle of doing some uploads on hollow churning, and the last upload I did was on the tools used for hollow churning. And I mentioned some uh, homemade or handmade tools that I didn't uh, show, and I had some response that people wanted to see those. So this short, hopefully short video will be on those tools. And I'm also going to show you a, a tool by David Schweitzer. And maybe later on I'll do a separate upload on that tool. It's a little bit uh, involved to get into it too much, uh, but I'm going to show you a little bit about that tool. Eventually, we're going to get to this piece of crab apple. That's going to be the main event in our Halloween series. So let's take a look at some more tools. I have my camera positioned in an overhead view and it's backed off a little bit to show you the scale of these tools. Most of these tools are handmade to some extent, and I'll show you those in a little bit more detail. I have my tape measure stretched out to about two feet, and that shows you how long some of the tool handles are. So let's take a little bit closer look at some of these hollowing tools. Now tools made from Allen wrenches can be the easiest and cheapest tools you can make on your own. If you have a grinder or maybe a sanding center, you can grind down the end of the tool to make it a hollowing tool. This is a, a real small little uh, Allen wrench that's uh, very suitable for very tiny uh, items that you might be hollowing. Um, you can make any size you want depending on the Allen wrench. And I use these a lot on Christmas globes and making them hollow, so um, that's very easily done. Now just to remind you, hollowing tools are basically scrapers because you can't get into a hollow vessel normally and uh, rub the bevel as you would on the outside of a bowl, for example. The tool on the uh, bottom is about two feet long or maybe even a little bit longer. Uh, the tool on the top is one you might use on the opening. It's a little bit curved. The very tip of the tool, as you can see right here, has a piece of high-speed steel brazed onto that. And I think with a little bit of research you can find some high-speed steel. And uh, if you know a welder who can just braze that on there, or whatever they do, uh, you can make a really cheap tool. And some of you are probably aware of the Grizzly Industrial Catalog. I have been buying stuff from them and I have some uh, bigger tools like a table saw and a planer uh, from Grizzly. They're an excellent tool catalog and they've got some high speed steel in there. And you can pick up an end like this for maybe three, four bucks, pretty cheap. Uh, make your own tools. And uh, a lot of times the reason for doing that is because you want a tool that's custom for whatever you want to do or accomplish in your in your hollowing or wood turning. And I'll give a shout out to Tony, who's a member of our club, the Warland Wyoming Wood Turners. We're a small group, but uh, we have a lot of fun. We meet once a month. So if you're in the Bighorn Basin in Wyoming, give us a call and uh, come and visit with us. Okay, the tips of these two tools are from uh, the company Proform and you can buy the entire assembly with the tool handle and I've simply taken this uh, this round stock from the hardware store that you can buy pretty inexpensively and I've drilled into that and the, the cutting tip of this uh, pro form is this part here and this part you can buy that and then eh, it's probably thirty forty dollars but it makes a pretty good scraping tool now let me turn those over and they're used in that orientation. They're a scraping tool. And if I can get a close up here. Now part of this assembly, there's a little nut here that tightens down and locks in that scraping uh, part of that tool. And you can adjust that to uh, different profiles depending on where you're, whoops, where you're uh, scraping on the inside of your vessel. And those are a couple tools that you can buy the, just by the tips, and I'll back that off just a little bit. Uh, I have one in a wooden handle and one in a modular handle.
and I can go uh, 10, 12 inches off a tool rest and those work fairly well as homemade tools. Now this last tool I'm showing you is not a homemade tool. It is a Dave Schweitzer tool and I'll put that name up uh, as a note so you can kind of investigate that. Now Dave makes a wide range of turning tools including the normal spindle and roughing gouges and uh, bowl gouges and some beading tools which I have a couple and they're really really neat tools as well as the tool you're looking at this is a a hollowing tool with a really neat uh, thickness gauge on the side of that and I'll take you over to the lathe and show you how that works. Now this is one of my favorite turning tools. Uh, again this is a Dave Schweitzer tool and it's got a nice arm brace on it. Here's the cutting end of it and it's got a set screw in there that you can adjust the cutter head to different uh, angles and profiles and it's got a depth gauge on it which you can adjust right here and it really speeds up the hollowing process when you're doing a hollow form and it's held in this orientation the cutting tip is adjusted just a little bit above center line remember this is a scraper now one more thing about this tool is I have my lathe running in reverse when I'm using this tool Dave makes these both, uh, which enables you to turn in forward and reverse. The idea for turning in reverse with this tool, I have a cutaway of a bowl in my lathe, so you can kind of see where this cutter is going. I can look directly down on this and have a very good view of where I'm cutting and where my depth, depth gauge is as I go around the uh, profile of that bowl. Now with this overhead view, you can see where the tool is riding on the tool rest. And here's the depth gauge. So if I have set my depth gauge to the correct depth, I can look at that gap in there and estimate my depth. Now up here towards the rim, I'm too thick. And this bowl simply didn't make it through quality control, so I use it for demonstrations. Now I'm going to unlock my spindle and show you the profile of the bowl. And you can see how that follows around there. And you can very quickly uh, hollow something out because if you get too thin, you're going to have too big of a gap in there. And you can turn this cutter to make a more of a, a, a scraping cut along the edge and a finishing cut and it does a pretty good job of that. Now let me, let me show you one more thing. If I've got my tool in this orientation it's too much of an angle and the depth gauge is not really giving me an accurate <clears throat> representation of the depth of my piece of wood. So this tool must be held in a perpendicular orientation as you go around the profile of that bowl. Well, it's the day after Christmas, 2012. Uh, I hope you have a very, very good year coming up and a safe year. Be careful turning on the lathe, and uh, I appreciate you tuning in to this, and, and I do appreciate your comments. Uh, I like to have ideas for new videos that I like to do, and uh, I'm, I'm very grateful to the people that uh, subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate that. So Merry Christmas, have a good year, and I'll, I'll see you next time.